I respect, uh, Kaisa Saab, your right, freedom of expression. Everyone's right. And I don't think there should be any curbs on responsible freedom of expression. But if that freedom uses half-truths, quarter-truths, and no truths, then it is my humble duty to respond. Pakistan is in a state of confusion because it was born in a state of confusion. Confusion. Confusion is actually good. Confusion means change. Confusion means evolution. Every nation evolves. The United States in the late 18th century had a declaration which said all men are created equal. Equal? The Afro-American blacks were never equal. The Native Americans were never equal. Even in the 21st century, they are fighting for equality with white Americans. Pakistan, from the word go, said all citizens are equal. The French Revolution said liberty, fraternity, equality. It took France 150 years to give women the right to vote in 1944. Evolution, not confusion. The basis of Pakistan as articulated by Muhammad Ali Jinnah was that there are only two nations that live on this subcontinent. They are mutually hostile. They cannot ever live in peace. That was part one. Part two was that Muslims form a nation. The second part is completely nonsensical. Who invented the two-nation theory? Not Mr. Jinnah, not Chaudhary Rahmat Ali, not Allama Iqbal. The Arya Samaj, an exclusive Hindu organization, was set up in 1875. The Hindu Mahasabha was set up in 1915. The RSS was set up in 1925. Mr. Jinnah was acknowledged as the ambassador of Hindu-Muslim unity. But when even Mr. Gandhi introduced religion into politics, when all these people started talking about Hindu Rashtra, that the whole nation should be the Hindu nation, Allama Iqbal, Chaudhary Rehmat Ali, and finally Mr. Jinnah were obliged to say no. Within this region live two nations. There are other nations, but the two major nations are the Muslim nation and the Hindu nation. Because we have different beliefs, we have different heroes, we have different diets, we have different customs and cultures, which doesn't mean that the two-nation theory promoted hatred against Hindus. Never. Mr. Jinnah was a man who believed in peace and non-violence. He never wrote a single research paper. He never wrote an essay. Mr. Jinnah was a political leader. He was a statesman. He created a new nation. He created a new nation state. He changed the map of the world. He was not a professor or a lecturer who was supposed to write an essay or write a research paper. If that is what you wanted him to be, fine. Then perhaps we should have waited for another 50 years for someone to come along, an academic, a respectable professor, to give us Pakistan. He gave a lot of speeches which at different times said very different things. He didn't have an idea of Pakistan. I'm sorry, although many of you believe that he did, he did not. The audience here will applaud what he said on the 11th of August 1947. But do they want to hear what he said in the frontier where he said, you are Muslims first and Indians second. And this was before Pakistan was formed. In 1948, here in Karachi at 
addressing the bar council he said this will be a land where islamic law will be applied what he said on the 11th of august is not contradicted by what he said in 1945 or 1948 what did he say he said pakistan will be a country which will be guided governed by islamic principles what are those islamic principles look at surah al baqara ayat number 62 the same ayat comes as ayat number 65 in surah al maida what does god tell us he says whether you be muslims christians jews any other faith as long as you do good and believe in the day of judgment you have no fear so the qaid was actually endorsing pluralism democracy participation there was no contradiction between what he said on the 11th of august and all his other pronouncements how would pakistan survive in a world where science and technology is what makes countries strong he had no plans for that yes sir sir if you look through the speeches and statements of mr dina you will find an extraordinary focus on literacy on education being the basis for development he went out of his way to encourage women to achieve education he stressed this to civil service officers he said it to armed forces officials education science and technology is part of that process so to dismiss all his utterances and to assume that he never made any plans for science and technology perhaps you're right he should have sat down and written out five year plans even before he had created the country today we do not need an ideology for pakistan countries survive without ideologies every country is inspired by a set of principles dreams aspirations that is what we call ideology and we are proud that islam has given us the elements of an ideology which doesn't mean we don't respect non muslims they are also equally entitled to all the protections of that ideology historic countries like china which have been there for thousands of years china needs an ideology whether it was the original communism or today's communism needs an ideology the united states has an ideology they call it the constitution in 1971 when the two nation theory went into the bay of bengal after breaking away from the state of pakistan did bangladesh go back into west bengal did it say now we want to be remerged with india because religion is no longer the basis for us today bangladesh remains proudly muslim predominantly muslim bangladesh muslim bangladeshi nationalism is the foundation of bangladesh so the two nation theory today is beautifully alive and well we mistreated the bengalis we thought of them as lesser people we exploited them and then we massacred them the massacres that occurred in which thousands of bengali brethren were killed was unpardonable should we forget should we forget those tens of thousands of children women men who without weapons were also massacred only because they were west pakistani should we forget if muslims could always live in peace together you would not have the separatist movement in balochistan which again nobody is allowed to mention 99% of them if not more want to remain part of pakistan they want the fulfillment of their rights which we owe to them make all possible effort to make sure they obtain their due rights we launched a new book on balochistan self critical by a serving major general of the pakistan army so there is no 
restriction on freedom of expression on Balochistan. As for a secessionist movement, this is a problem many nation states face. States in Northeast India have been wanting to secede. Scotland wants to break away from the United Kingdom. In Spain, the Basques and the Catalonians want to secede from Spain. It is not unique to Baluchistan. It is a challenge for us to reconcile and to give them their due rights. And everyone wants that to be settled peacefully. What we need is a Pakistan that is built upon common interests of the people, of the people of Pakistan, which must include the Baloch, the Sindhis, the Pathans, the Punjabis, the Gilgitis, Baltistanis, everyone. This is not a country that was made for the armed forces of Pakistan. You know, to single out the armed forces, uh, which have played a major role in our history, and sometimes that role has not been what the armed forces should have done. Uh, for example, coming into the political sphere, the armed forces should not have done it. But that is part of our history. And in the political sphere, particularly after the 18th Amendment, we have enormous provincial autonomy levels unprecedented in our history. So therefore, the concept of participation through regular elections, through democracy, is now a part of the Pakistani political psyche. And merely the existence of the army does not negate that. We are a very democratic people. Throughout the year, there are elections for bar associations, teachers associations, doctors, architects, engineers, chambers of commerce, private clubs. People of Pakistan love democracy from the word go, despite four military interventions. So we are coexisting between the army and the civil. There has to be a balanced relationship, which I hope we will evolve in the years to come.